In this tutorial, we're going to explain the process of taking a casting resin and thickening it to a brushable paste. Now, this particular process is useful if you're casting into really large molds that wouldn't make sense for a solid pour and rotational casting isn't necessarily practical. Now, typically this kind of application is backed up with rigid foam. And this particular tutorial, I'm gonna keep this short and quick. So we're just going to address the process of uh, creating a brushable paste and then brushing that into an open face mold. Now, the resin we're going to be using for this is a, a relatively new formula. This is the TC804. TC804 is normally just kind of a, uh, an off-white color, but uh, TC804 Jet Black is, of course, Jet Black. And this particular resin formula, this is a nice one for this application because it has a, about a six to seven minute working time. And that may sound relatively fast, but in the resin world, that's, that's a lot of working time. So this is a good formula that, that's suit, well suited for uh, pressure casting and that sort of thing. Now, because it does have that black pigment, it's important to remember that just like you see here, stay, shake or stir before use. So you wanna always shake up that part really good, that part B, because if you don't suspend that pigment really good, you're gonna wind up with some uh, parts of your resin cast will come out more of a gray than a true jet black. Now, to the thickening part of this. What we're using as a thickening agent, since we don't have the luxury of being able to thicken resin formulas with uh, something like we have with silicone, like tin thicks or plat thicks, we're going to use polyfiber. Now in the old days, resins like this were thickened with uh, cabosil or some kind of fume silica. Polyfiber is a really nice alternative to that in that it's a microfiber and rather than being a really small little flake of basically like glass, this is just a synthetic flexible fiber. So it's a much safer material to work with and it doesn't suspend in the air the way uh, fume silica does. Now we're gonna start by shaking up our part B really well. You wanna make sure you get that shaken up really good. And you need to do that each time before you dispense that part B because it doesn't take long for that to settle out and uh, again, that will create a discoloration in your resin. Okay, now by weight, this is 100A to 90B, but by volume, it's one-to-one, -one, and that's real important. You see that on a lot of resin systems that have different specific gravities for the different materials. Because of that difference in density, that's why you have that disparity between the weight ratio and the volume ratio. So you never want to assume that just because something is one-to-one -one by weight that it's also one-to-one -one by volume. Now we're just gonna mix up a small batch. So we've already poured our part A to the six ounce mark and I'm just gonna pour the part B up to the 12 ounce mark. And you'll notice I'm doing this all in one mixing cup. And the reason I'm doing this in one mixing cup is when we separate our two components, we do pour out our A and our B separately. When we go to combine those together, because we have two different viscosities on those, uh, it's easy to get some of that product left behind. So that leads to waste. And if you're not careful, you could actually get off ratio. So measuring everything, mixing and measuring in a single cup eliminates a lot of waste and a lot of chance to get out of ratio. Now remember our working time starts as soon as we put those two parts together. So we wanna get this stirred up and really right there, we've got a good mix on that. Now we need to add our thickener. So it's important to remember that with polyfiber, we don't have to worry about anything uh, changing the chemistry of our resin. So it's not like by adding this, we're altering the composition of the resin. And what I mean by that, this being inert, it doesn't matter if you add a little bit or a lot, it's not gonna change the resin. Now, obviously there is a point where you hit diminishing returns of it gets really thick and now you have more polyfiber than you have resin and that's where you get really brittle casts. So 
you want to be careful that when you go really heavy on the thickener that you might have to make a little bit thicker cast to get the strength you want. But when people ask us, well, how much polyfiber do I add? You really, it's as much as is needed to get the thick, the uh, thixotropic effect that you want. So you'll see here, this is about two handfuls and that's the consistency we have. It's a really, almost like axle grease. And it's still a little lumpy. It has kind of the consistency of uh, oatmeal right now. And if we want this to be thicker, we can just keep adding. But right now, this is a really nice paste consistency. And one little trick you can do for figuring out what your consistency is, is pull it up on the side of the mixing cup and watch the way that slumps back down. And that's a good indicator of if you need to add a little bit more or if it's good to go. Now remember when you're brushing this into a mold, when you're brushing this into a mold, you want to use a cheap throwaway brush because you will destroy every brush that goes into this resin. Now this is a, a really simple uh, gel 25 mold that we made, a brush on mold with a resin shell. This is some of the BR75D on the back here. This is a very simple mold, but this is a, a good example of the kind of mold that works really well for this. And I also like this for uh, brushing in uh, resin into life cast molds. For like silicone life cast molds that are made with gel 25, this is fantastic for that. Because you really need a resin that has more of a thixotropic property to it for uh, casting complicated life casts, and this allows for that. Now one thing uh, that I'm able to do with a smaller batch that I don't typically do on the larger ones is I'm working right out of the mixing cup. If you're working with a really large batch, it's a good idea to just get it all out and just scoop it out into the middle of the mold and spread it from there. And the reason for that, when you're working with really large batches of thickened resin, that extra thickness to it is going to uh, make for more exotherm. Again, it's not chemically changing anything, but it's gonna seem like it's going off faster because now you have this big mass of resin that rather than pour it into a mold, you have building up extra heat sitting in the mixing bucket. So remember that, that uh, that will eat away at that working time. If you let that sit in a mixing cup in a really thick mass, it's gonna go off that much faster. Now again, you'll see here, this is, uh, we have a really nice working consistency. We can go in and thicken up those edges, but that's gonna give us a, a lot more conservative use of resin on a part like this than if we were just to pour this solid. And the advantage to this particular approach of this resin being this jet black resin is this allows us to go back on top of this with one of the Sculpt Nouveau metal coatings. So we could put some copper or bronze or silver B metal coating right on top of that casting, provided we don't have any mold release residue, and uh, get a really nice metallic finish on that and just let the natural black color of the resin be our background color. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and stop there. And again, just to make cleanup easy, a lot of times I just leave that brush in the bucket and that makes for a nice little handle to pull out any of that leftover resin and we're gonna let this set. Now, one more thing you wanna be really conscious of with some of these slower resin systems like this that have that longer working time. The longer the working time, the more susceptible it is to ambient humidity. So you wanna be aware of that. If you've got a resin system that has a 20 minute working time and you're in New Orleans, you're gonna have considerable foaming by the time that resin kicks off. And it might look, look beautiful at this stage, but as soon as it really starts to kick off an exotherm, uh, that heat will cause the moisture to expand into little steam bubbles. And that's where you get this uh, a part that looks perfect. You go away, come back, and now everything's swelled up like foam because it essentially is foam at that stage. So be aware of that. If you're in Florida or any other really humid area, 
be aware that if you're not in a climate controlled environment with very low humidity, these slower resin systems will react to that ambient humidity. Now, one last little thing we're not going to do here, but uh, you can also, at this stage, you could embed hanging or mounting hardware into this, or we could come back with one more coat and uh, trowel that in. So that's another nice aspect of this approach to casting is, especially for artwork, when you're brushing this into large life cast molds and things like that, you could embed uh, wire or rope or anything else you need to later hang the piece. Okay, it is now time to demold our resin part. And now, in accordance with the prophecy, you see our brush acted as a, a nice handle to pull out that remaining resin. And our mixing cup will uh, survive to cast another day. So this is now ready to demold. Now, quick word about mold release. I did not use any mold release when I cast this. This is a gel 25 silicone mold that typically does not require any release for resin casting. You can use a mold release like 2500 to, or the urethane par film to help the lifespan of the mold. Uh, but just remember, if you're gonna be doing any painting, that uh, whatever mold release you use will need to be cleaned off before it'll take paint. And there we have our finished cast part. And again, because this is a brushed in cast, this used a lot less resin than if we did a solid pour. Now, at this stage, it's still a little bit green, and that's ideal for doing any kind of cleanup work. So there is our finished cast, and because we didn't use any mold release, we can now go straight over to the painting process. Okay, now this is by no means a comprehensive painting tutorial. I just want to show a few possibilities using a black resin like this in conjunction with the metal coating. So uh, be sure to check out some of our other videos for uh, more, uh, uh, more involved painting and finishing techniques. Now I'm just gonna dry brush a little bit of the copper B metal coating, and this contains real copper, so that allows it to oxidize accordingly. And we just want a minimal amount on the brush. And just doing this to bring out that, the contrast there and then bring out that detail. I want those, the Copper at uh, copper highlights and that black background. And there we have a quick copper finish over a black resin piece. Um, straight out of the mold. And one of the nice things about the Sculpt Nouveau metal coatings is uh, these metal coatings, as well as the sister product, Primit Primer, is a water-based uh, series, but it bonds really well to polyurethane resin. So here we have our basic resin brushed in casting using the polyfiber thickening agent. And again, this is a great technique for minimizing the amount of resin used for really large open face molds. So especially in the theatrical world, in the prop making world, uh, that's a really important thing. If you're making something like a tree or you know, a giant boulder or something like that, it just doesn't make sense to do large uh, uh, solid pours. And even when you're using uh, urethane foam, still sometimes there's a need to create a really nice a hard resin skin on the outside of a prop. So again, that's where having that uh, thickened resin that we could brush into the inside of a mold, and again, there's not a lot of really large molds are not gonna lend themselves to rotational casting. So this ability to thicken and brush a resin into place just fills that kind of a weird gray area between traditional solid pour casting and rotational casting. So there you have the process of thickening polyurethane resin with polyfiber for brush-in casts. 
And as always, if you haven't, be sure to like and subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified about new content. And just remember that all of our supplies are available on our website at brickintheyard.com. And you can also check the uh, video description for links to all the products we used here and, of course, to our video library. So that's where we have all of our content organized on our website that makes it a little bit easier to navigate. So again, thanks for watching and of course, remember to click that bell icon.